The recession will end on July 13th. You've heard it here first. How do I know this? Is because history tells us that 107 days after the bottom of the market is when the recession is officially ended. And so what that means is if you look at March 23rd was the bottom of the S&P 500 for the market, March 23rd. I don't know about the Dow. You shouldn't look at the Dow as your proxy for the markets anyway. March 23rd was uh, when the S&P was down to, did it even drop below 2000? I can't remember, but anyway, it be as it may. March 23rd was when the S&P 500 ended its, uh, uh, its, 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 stopped its losing streak essentially. 107 days from March 23rd will be July 10th. Now the interesting thing is, Q1 is already in the books as a negative <coughs> quarter. Q2 will be a negative quarter, we know that for a fact. Why? Because Q2 is when everything hit the fan for sure. So then the question is what happens in Q3? Well, Q2 ends on, on June 30th. And so even if we have two weeks of negativity in Q3 in the first two weeks of July, it won't matter because the rest of the quarter will be up for sure. Pablo, come here. I mean, let's think about it like this. If you're down so low, there's no place to go other than up. All right, so once you're down that far, all you got to do is go up a little bit and you know, you're still way down from where you were, but you're up from where you were recently, if that makes sense. And that means the recession inherently will be over, which is why recessions don't last long. And the reason for that is simply because once you go down that far, that steep, all it takes is just a little bit of a bump to get out of recession and back into growth, even though you're way below where you started. And I was reading this article by, from Leg Mason, I think it's a guy named Michael Labata or Labats or something like that. And, um, it's pretty interesting actually talking about it. I'll do a video on that specifically because lots of good information there. Most of it's uh, pretty common stuff, but I thought it was pretty interesting about the average recession ending 107 days after the market bottom. So Q3 is going to be up. Q2 is going to be ugly for sure. Q1 turned out to be negative, even though it started the first two months as solid positive. Q3 is going to be ugly. Uh, Q2 will be ugly. Then Q3 will be up and thus will be end of recession. That doesn't mean it's good. Hell, man, just because you're freaking up doesn't mean from where you were at the end of Q2 that we should jump for joy. It just means the bleeding has stopped or the, you're not bleeding further, if that makes a sense. You're still bleeding, but the bleeding has receded, but you're still bleeding. That's what it should be. The law of diminishing returns, essentially. The, uh, <laughs> the gushing blood is now just a slow trickle, but still bleeding big time. But anyways, that you heard it here first. March, uh, July 10th, 2020, the end of the recession. Now, again, it won't even, no one will say it happened on March, on July 10th. And the reason for that is because recessions are quarter to quarter. So, but we can, we can simply say at the end of the day, we can mark our calendars July 10th. Recession's over and growth kicks in again. Let me just share with you real quick too. I, in my uh, video on financial advisors, I talked about how people here, my uh, webinar I did for financial advisors who are uh, guys who are gays and ladies who are thinking about going to the business. I spoke about how people hear what they want to hear, not what you are saying. And, uh, and I just want to be clear. When I say be on the lookout for a stock market decline uh, because of, I, I'm not saying it's a fake jobs report or a cook jobs report. I just don't trust it. I don't think you should trust any government numbers right out the gate. They always get rectified. Um, that doesn't mean I'm thinking we're we're going into doldrums. I just it, I'm just saying be prepared. Doesn't mean I think you should sell your stocks for heaven's sake. I said literally in that video, don't sell your stocks. I don't think it. Why would you sell your stocks now? It doesn't make sense. But a deep to stock market decline just simply means and watching out for a Trump or not Trump. Uh, a uh, well, Trump is advocating this huge jobs report numbers. I just think you're taking a bait that says this, that we're out of the woods, and I don't think quite so yet. And anyway, a lot of people took that like I'm, I'm being negative. I'm not at all. I mean, I'm not being negative. You just can't have this many people lose their job and just mar magically, a month later, we're all back to freaking not even Steven. It doesn't make sense unless the number of people who lost their jobs was incorrect to begin with. That's what I was implying. Something is wrong here. Either the number of people who lost their jobs to begin with was incorrect, or the number of people who got their jobs back is incorrect, or like one of you all posted, a number of people are just done looking for work right now because there's nothing to be had, or they're social distancing, I don't know what it is. That might well be the case. Either way, 
What happens is negative unforeseen information scares the markets and thus a market decline is probably inevitable. Doesn't mean you sell, doesn't mean we're going to a great depression, doesn't mean any of this stuff, I don't know. But I wouldn't sell, heaven's sake, if you would have sold, why, why would you do it now? You've written out the negatives and the highs, just keep writing, it doesn't make sense. The 500 companies of America, all right, that dominate the world economically are not going kaput. Warren Buffett said, uh, in a recession, there's still uh, farmland, there's still factories, there's still skill, the skills of the American worker. That doesn't stop. These things don't stop. People still produce stuff. People still buy stuff. Now, it might not be to the extent they were before, but it's still happening. There is still consumer activity, which consumer activity drives the GDP a bit more than anything else. It's not like this is stopping. It's just what I'm saying is the stock market is a quick snapshot of what the sentiment is for that day, essentially. And if that day on Friday was predicated on this huge jobs report, and then we get note that the jobs report was a little bit too uh, optimistic, you could easily see the market taking a dip tomorrow. That doesn't mean you sell. It doesn't mean you freak out. It just says, all right, just be prepared. That's what I'm trying to say. Be prepared. Don't panic when things go against what you thought would happen. It doesn't make sense. Stay the course. Don't panic. Always be prepared. A negative hit does, that you are unprepared for is what will make people sell. You cannot sell in the down market. All right, Pop, let's get ready to bark. We'll see you.